Well, it's another beautiful day out here on the farm, and it's time to spend the day in the tractor. So today, the project that we have ahead of us is to finish what I started last night, which is the mowing of the field. And we'll get out in a second and explain why we're going to mow the field. Uh, but first, let's go, of course, do the thing that we find to be the most fun when we get out here, and that is take a look at the cows. That loud sound that you hear around me and the shaking, that is what I lovingly refer to as the murder machine. So let's go take a look at it. So we'll turn the tractor off for a minute so we can talk about this thing. Uh, it's not, not great to stand next to it while it's running, um, just in case stuff flew out from underneath it. Just, it's moving pretty fast, not a great idea. But anyway, this behind me, of course, is what I refer to as the murder machine because anything that goes under it dies. Um, it is the John Deere HX10 rotary cutter, which is their heavy duty cutter. Um, this one's rated for three inch material. Um, I've put pieces of two inch wood through it, through, you know, small trees, and you hear it, it goes, you know, chunk, chunk, chunk as it goes through it, but um, it goes through it just fine. Doesn't seem to hurt it in any way. So um, the reason, of course, that we're doing this is the stuff behind me that we'll take a look at. So the reason that we are out here in the field is because of this stuff. Um, this stuff that I believe is referred to as marsh elder. I am not necessarily the expert on all plants, but um, there is a ton of it out here in the field and it's grown nice and high. Uh, much higher, as you can see, than the grass that is underneath it. So what we are doing is we are going through the field and cutting it down to about 12 inches high or so. We're trying to keep it fairly high so that we keep as much of that grass that's underneath intact. Um, but of course, that means going through and doing a whole lot of cutting. And so, of course, this is our cutter. Uh, it's nice and dirty because I had it out last night doing all of the cutting that I have uh, done so far in the field over here. Uh, but of course, we have a lot left to do. Uh, pretty typical stuff, you know, standard PTO driveline. Under there is actually a slip clutch. And then of course you've got your center gearbox and your side gearboxes. Um, these gearboxes are meant to be a little bit heavier than the MX models because it's just meant to be able to take a little bit more of a beating. Um, there's two ways that I have found to run this thing. One is of course with the top link pushed out where the cutter is actually resting on the rear wheels and it's kind of floating, kind of floating up and down on the rear wheels. Uh, which works great, and you know, I actually would prefer to run it that way when I can. Um, however, right now, the ground is really, really dry. And what that means out here is that it's really, really dry and really, really bumpy, which means if the back end of this thing, uh, which weighs about 2,200 pounds, by the way, if the back end of this thing is sitting on the back wheels with the weight on them, then it's really bumpy. It's really rough trying to go through the field at any kind of speed with this thing. So what I'm doing right now is supporting it completely on the tractor. And it doesn't look like it in the picture here, but these wheels are actually not uh, supporting it in any way. They're only about an inch or two off the ground because I don't really want the back end to be high. So they're pretty close to the ground, but the key is they're not supporting weight. So they're not making it really bumpy behind the tractor as I'm running this thing. And again, just to give you an idea of how high this stuff is that we're cutting through, right? That's it's about here. So, I mean, from there over to me, that's, you know, about mid chest level. So it's, it's pretty high stuff. So we want to cut that all down so that the cows can more easily get to the good grass underneath. Also, if I'm right about what this stuff is, it's an annual, which means if I can cut it down before a lot of this goes to seed, then hopefully I can kill off a bunch of it so that I can try to kill off a bunch of it and not have it in the field next year, which would be really nice. Um, we'll see how well that works, but either way, we'll cut it down so that the grass underneath can get more sun, grow better, and the cows can get to it. I'll also just mention, of course, that for those of you who are saying, you should have cut this earlier. This is way too tall. You should have been out here months ago cutting this. Uh, yes, you're right, I should have. Uh, I really should have cut this field in something like 
January and then again in April and then probably, really, I probably should have cut it at the end of July. Um, but we're here now, so let's get it done. Now the one downside to this cutter is that, of course, it takes quite a bit of power to start it. It requires, according to the manual, an 80 horsepower PTO, which is okay because this tractor is a 100 horse PTO, uh, but that still means it takes quite a bit of power to start this thing. It also means that it's fairly tough on an engine when you want to start it. And it will stall this tractor if I just start it outright because this tractor has an electrohydraulic clutch. So let's take a look at the trick that I used to start this thing. All right, so the clutch for the PTO on this tractor is this guy. And you basically push this together and then pull up to engage the PTO. Now, what that means is you just pull up. There's no, you know, there's no gradient to that. There's no, you know, halfway or something like that. And it just, you know, engages a little bit. It's either on or it's off. And the clutch, being electrohydraulic, engages pretty quickly. So the way that I have found to engage this thing is this. You come up here and you rev it up to something like 1500. I, I, ideally, you'd like to engage the PTO as low as you can, but because this thing is so big, um, you can't do it real low unless you just want to stall it. So then what I will do is I will effectively pulse this PTO clutch. So here we go, here is pulse number one. And let it go, pulse number two, let it go, pulse number three and leave it in. And there we go. Again, I'm not convinced that that's necessarily the perfect way to do this, but on something where you don't control the clutch to be able to do it gradually, that seems to be, as far as I can tell, the best way to do this. And so when you're running this thing, this is what it looks like out the back. And this is what it looks like out the front. One of the things you'll notice out the front is that I have the bale fork on there. And the reason for that is I like to use it, I try to angle the fork just right so that I can line it up where the tip of the fork lines up with the edge from the previous run. That way I don't have to keep, you know, trying to stare down to the side or trying to use the mirror to look at the cutter in the back or something like that. I can just line it up with that and go. Just makes it a little easier on me. So then I thought I'd give you a little bit of a taste of what it's like in the cab at different speeds. So first of all, here's third gear. Third isn't so bad. It's about four miles an hour. It's a little bumpy, but it's not so bad. Honestly, don't even need a seatbelt on this one. And here's fourth gear. Fourth, on the other hand, is a whole nother matter. Six miles an hour, you get a lot more done, but you definitely need a seat belt, and it's moving around an awful lot. Now I spend most of my time actually in fourth gear because I want to get this done, and um, it definitely demonstrates the necessity of the air ride seat, so there's that. But the other thing you'll notice is that everything is covered in pollen. These windows are actually pretty dirty around me in that, um, because this stuff when, you, when it's being cut like this, I guess those pods that are on the top of these marsh elders are really full of pollen. So it's, it's just putting out pollen like a spray. So anyway, that's all right. We'll clean this thing off when we're done. But I got probably quite a few hours ahead of me of mowing. So we'll get that done. And uh, coming up, we got a bunch of other projects. We should have some new calves showing up soon. So we'll get some video of them when they get here. So until next time, we'll see you soon.